Good day. If you're familiar with the channel, you know I fly Micro FPV quadcopters, which are mainly those that spin 3 inch props or less. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm T Mac. I help pilots like you start and continue their journey to better FPV fun through videos like this one and the Fast Track FPV course, which you can check out the curriculum and student testimonials through the course link in the video description below. Today, I'm going to start a short video series, which I'll include as a playlist link below on how I go about tuning my micro FPV drones for smoother flights and better performance. If you're just learning to fly FPV, I do not recommend doing any PID or filter tuning to your Bind and Fly Quad's original setup as long as it seems to be working out okay for you. Just focus on learning to fly and having a blast. My goal in this drone tuning guide is to get the best possible performance out of your quad in the shortest amount of time. This video is going to be shorter and simpler than you might think just because of the outstanding tools the Betaflight devs and testers have given us and the work done by so many previously such as Josh Bardwell and Mark Spatz of UAV Tech. Links to their channels and how you can support further Betaflight development are also in the video description below. I'll start by establishing a baseline for each tune which may get refined over time. The end result will be a PID and filter tuning template or a preset for micro FPV drones of various sizes based on variables like thrust to weight ratios, battery cell count, and types of props used. This drone tuning process I go through is included in this checklist, which you can download through a link in the video description below. I'm also making available the CLI PID settings and filter commands I use for each of the drones I'll be tuning. There are lots of ways to tune an FPV drone. This is the simplest way I tune mine. So what you're going to get out of this is TMAX tuning guide for micro FPV drones. Sound good? Then give this video a thumbs up below, share it with at least one of your friends to help them out, and subscribe to your TMAC FPV channel, your home for your journey to better FPV fun, flights, and racing stuff. Here's our starting points. We'll be using a version of Betaflight 4.2 as our flight controller firmware. At the time of this video's posting, it's in Release Candidate 4. However, its official release is on the horizon. If you're not certain how to flash firmware to your flight controller, I've got a link to a short 5 minute video below appropriately titled How to Flash Betaflight Firmware to Your Flight Controller. Since we're using Betaflight 4.2, this requires we use Betaflight Configurator version 10.7 or newer. Version 10.7, as of the posting of this video, is in Release Candidate 2, but it too will be officially released soon with Betaflight 4.2. The Configurator is a software user interface needed to properly configure the Betaflight firmware on your flight controller. I think of it this way, Betaflight firmware on your flight controller is analogous to OpenTX firmware on your transmitter. And the Betaflight configurator is the equivalent of OpenTX companion used for your transmitter. So our starting point for our tune is with the configurator we have already flashed our Betaflight 4.2 firmware to our flight controller. We will be using RPM filters. That means the ESCs of our quadcopter will need to have version 32.7 or newer if they're BL Heli 32 ESCs or if they're BL Heli S ESCs they'll require J ESC firmware or Jazz Maverick version 16.73 per Betaflight release notes. If you don't know what I'm talking about no worries because I've got a Betaflight RPM filters video and checklist which covers all of that which you can check out through a link below after the end of this video. So for our purposes today we will have already updated our ESCs with the necessary firmware to support RPM filtering through the process identified in the video just mentioned. Trying to tune your quad without RPM filtering is a lot more difficult than with RPM filtering and once again that's explained in the RPM filters video. Now let's start our tune. To form good habits we've connected our quadcopter to our computer with its props off. Once connected we go to our PID tuning tab and then filter settings. The default settings within Betaflight are primarily set up for 5 inch quads, however they may work for lighter quads as well. Before we change anything I want to make sure we're all on the same sheet when it comes to the concept of Betaflight filters. A quadcopter during flight is subject to a lot of vibrations, normally primarily caused by rapidly turning motors, but can also be from bent props, an unsecure flight controller, or other things. This creates unwanted noise in the gyro signal and possibly hot motors. The correct implementation of Betaflight filters gets rid of these unwanted vibrations and signal noise resulting in smooth flights and cooler to only warm motors, which is what we want. After flight, we want to be able to gently press our fingers on the outside of the motors and keep them there for about 10 seconds without feeling the need to remove them. Alright, let's see how we can do this. Getting back to our filter settings tab, 
As I mentioned earlier, we only want to change those settings which would be different for our micro FPV quads. With our configurator settings set up properly for RPM filters from our RPM filters video, the first thing we want to do is to ensure this gyro RPM filter is toggled on. This is your main killer of motor noise. Per the Betaflight tuning notes, we're going to keep this number at 3 and we want our min frequency at 100 Hz. With this number at 3, we'll generate 3 notch filters per motor for each axis, those being roll, pitch, and yaw, for a total of 36 RPM notch filters which seek out and destroy motor noise based on the RPMs of each individual motor. This is why you want to use RPM filters. With the RPM filters actively attacking motor noise, it frees up any of these other filters to do work on any residual noises from other sources such as bent props or frame resonance. Our stick commands are below 100 Hz, so we're good to go with that 100 value. Our next most popular player on our filters team is this dynamic notch filter. The default width percent here is 8, which will give us two notch filters. We're going to reduce this number to 0, which will give us 1 instead since we really don't need two and it would just add more delay. We're going to put our dynamic notch Q at 250, which makes it a little bit more narrow than the default value, but we're going to reduce its min and max operating frequencies to 100 and 200, which is the lowest max allowable frequency. So we've now got that 100 and 200 hertz band covered like a blanket for residual noise or frame resonances. Lastly, we'll take a look at our gyro low pass filters and our D-term low pass filters. The devs have got a good write up in Betaflight 4.1 release notes as to why they've got these defaults the way they do, and I'll put a link to the Betaflight 4.1 tuning notes in the description below. The Betaflight 4.1 notes for these values still apply for 4.2. One thing to note specifically is the default value for low throttle defiltering is to prevent a D-related quote, fly to the moon events that sometimes happened with quads which were susceptible to de-resonance. Those same Betaflight 4.1 notes also state you should keep these low-pass filters on and move the sliders together if you need to adjust them one way or the other. Additionally, the notes state that most quads should be okay if you move the sliders to the 1.5 setting, looking at these numbers over here on the left. So what they're saying is, for most quads, it should be okay over here. We're not going to go that far. If you move these sliders to the right, you're going to get less filtering and better prop wash handling, but your motor temps could increase. That's something we obviously don't want because we could end up smoking a motor. So if you're going to adjust them to the right, adjust them one interval or notch at a time, then check your motor temps after a short 30 second flight or so. If your motor temps are okay, then most likely your slider positions are okay as well. As I mentioned earlier for our baseline tune though, I'm going to keep everything at its default values unless there's a specific reason not to for our micro quads. So for now, these sliders stay where they are. These filter settings, as you see them here, are fairly conservative, which means we may be able to adjust them in the future by reducing some of the filtering. For instance, with the low pass filters moving the sliders to the right, a couple notches, one at a time, as long as our motors don't get too hot to our touch after flight. However, these filter settings, as you see them here, should be a good baseline for any micro from whoop size to those running 3-inch props. And that's it for our filters tab. We toggled on our RPM filter and adjusted the min and max frequencies of the dynamic notch filter because of that to take care of any residual noise or frame resonances. Now let's go to our PIDs. These are the Betaflight 4.2 default values. Before we make any changes for our micro quads, and in today's case I'm tuning that 3 inch quad with a max thrust to weight ratio of 9.4 which you saw in the intro, it's my Rattler build, I'm going to show you how to use the sliders to make any necessary changes. This master multiplier slider changes the PIDs, D-max, and D-min, and feed forward all at the same time with this D-min toggled on. With this toggled on, the D-term basically becomes dynamic, switching between D-min for normal forward flight and D-max during sharp maneuvers. With this toggled off, the D-term will remain steady at what we set, and the steady state D-term will change along with the other PIDs when we move the master slider. We're going to toggle this off, and when I move this master multiplier slider now, you won't see D-min and D-max, you'll just see this one D-term and that changes with the rest of the proportional integral and feed forward terms. 
this PD balance slider will then only change the D term. The P and D gain slider will change both the P and D terms together, and that's why it's called PD gain. And the stick response gain slider only changes the feed forward values. Okay, we're really almost done. Now with that info, let's take a look at what changes we may consider for our micro quads relative to the Betaflight default values. These are the Betaflight defaults we just saw for the PIDs and feed forward. Since we're talking about micro quads, we want to take a look at how we should change these default values, if at all. The Betaflight notes from the devs suggest whoop type quads are what can be considered low authority quads, and I'll interpret that as low thrust to weight ratio, whereas usually our two to three inch non-whoop quads can be considered high authority. So we've already made a distinction then between these two types of quads. It seems reasonable then that the PIDs for each of these would be somewhat different. What I'm about to show you is how we should change the PIDs from these default values for each of these class quads, low authority and high authority. For the low authority whoop type quads, the devs recommend increasing the P and D terms one and a half to two times the default values, the feed forward terms two and a half to three times the default values, and to decrease the I term by a third to a half of the default values. On the other hand, for our high authority non whoop quads, pretty much the opposite is true. We want to decrease our values from the defaults by 20 to 30%. These are the guiding principles I'll use for our tune. Remember I said earlier the feed forward term can be adjusted by using the stick responsiveness slider. And it's really a personal preference as to the type of flying you like to do. For more cinematic type flights, you may want to adjust your feed forward down, while for a more responsive, snappier stick feel, you may want to increase your feed forward. And this makes sense if you look at the recommended feed forward changes for whoops, which are two and a half to three times the default values. Since these quads have lower authority, they need more of a boost. Now with this knowledge, let's go ahead and make our PID changes from the default values for our three inch micro FPV quad with a max thrust to weight ratio of 9.4. So we go to our PID tuning tab, and from what we learned previously for our two to three inch high authority quads, we want to try lowering our PIDs from the default values by 20 to 30%. The way we're going to do that is through this master multiplier slider and take it down to 0.8. We take notice of the fact our PIDs have been reduced by 20% to 80% of the defaults. We click save and we're good to go. That's really how simple this is. Is this gonna give us a perfect tune? It might, might not. The only way to find out is to take it out on a test flight which is what I'll do next. I'm gonna do a short 20 to 30 second flight in front of my quadiction gate bag to see if I can get any significant vibrations with this tune. If I do, I'll be able to see the letters on the bag bouncing around. Then I'm gonna check my motor's temp. If the temp is good, I'll do some quick 180 degree turns to see if I get any prop wash wobbles, and I'll do some flips and rolls to see if I get any noticeable shakes. If not, I'm happy and we're done. If my motor temps are too hot, I can adjust my D term value down using the PD balance slider, or if I'm getting prop wash and my motors are cool, I can adjust that same D-term up a little to take care of that prop wash. We can also do a more detailed analysis of what's going on by using a black box log if our flight controller has that ability and taking a look at it in Betaflight Black Box Explorer. We'll get into that here in the near future. For now, let's take her out and see how she does with just this tune. All right, I'm just gonna do a short flight around my quadiction gate bag, basically to check the motor temps. We'll come back and check them, and then from there, We'll go ahead and do some acrobatics. Check the motor temps.
no problem. All right, now I'll take it out and do some flips, rolls, and some hairpin turns, see if we get any prop wash oscillations or any shakes during the maneuvers. You tell me in the comments section below if you see anything that I need to work on between now and next time. So that's the basic foundation of my drone tuning guide. Start with the beta flight defaults and make as few changes as possible for micro FPV quads by using the sliders initially. Then fly and check your motor temp and refine your values only if necessary through visual and audio observation and or beta flight black box explorer, which we'll learn the basics of in this tuning guide video series. If you're happy with the way your quad flies using these settings, no need to make any changes. This should get you started with a good basic tune for your micro FPV quad. Remember, there's more to come in the next video of this series, so make sure to hit that little notification bell below so you won't miss out when I post the next one. For more good info to speed you along your journey to better FPV fun, make sure to check these out next. Thanks for your time. I'll see you next video. Clear skies, friends.